Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the upcoming Next Doc Touch. But before we jump right into it, I just wanna give you a quick refresher on the Next Doc. Earlier this year in 2020, I did a review on the Next Doc 2, and personally, I'm a big fan of this unit. I use a lot of different mobile devices for things that I do on my channel and in my real life. And the Next Doc 2 has actually turned into one of my most useful accessories for my single board computers, smartphones, and even some of my consoles like the Nintendo Switch. Now these Next Doc units are not full-fledged laptops. These are what's known as lap docks. Basically what we have here is a display, a keyboard, a battery, and a trackpad. And we can connect different HDMI enabled devices, be it a real HDMI output or HDMI over USB type C, and use those devices with a bigger screen, keyboard and trackpad with the Next Dock. Now there are a few things that I didn't like about the original Next Dock or the Next Dock 2. One of them being, it wasn't touchscreen. It was a 13.3 inch IPS 1080p display, and it did have some pretty beefy bezels on it. But it looks like all of that's been changed with the new Next Doc Touch because they have added a touch display. It's a 14.1 inch IPS at 1080 and it looks absolutely amazing. We have minimal bezels around the edges and on paper this definitely looks like an upgrade over the Next Doc too. If you do end up getting one of these, inside of the box you're going to receive all of the accessories that you need to connect basically any device as long as it supports HDMI or HDMI over USB Type-C, from consoles to single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi, and even Android devices that support HDMI out. And this actually works even better with Android devices that support some type of desktop mode, like Samsung DeX with the Galaxy S series, Huawei has a desktop mode, and even LG has jumped on the bandwagon recently. So as for the basic specs here, we have a 14.1 inch IPS touchscreen at 1080 with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, a 60 watt hour battery, four one watt speakers, full size backlit keyboard, and we also have that multi-touch trackpad. And the weight on the Next Doc Touch is around 3.1 pounds, and that is a bit heavy for what we're working with here, but this thing is built very well. It's got an inner steel chassis, we have that 60 watt hour battery, and I did expect a little heft from this thing. So over on the left hand side we have one full size HDMI port and three USB type C ports, but these are very specific ports. On the far right is our USB type C display port. This is how we're going to feed a video signal in through USB type C to this display. Right in the middle is a regular old USB type C port that will transfer data. And the last one on the far left is for charging the unit up or charging the internal 60 watt hour battery. On the right hand side we have a full size USB 3.0 port, our headphone jack, and a micro SD card reader. And this micro SD card reader is just going to work as external storage for whatever device you have plugged in. Using the Next Dock is super easy. All you need to do is turn it on and then plug in an HDMI device or a USB Type-C device that supports HDMI like the Samsung Galaxy S10 here. One of my favorite ways to use the Next Dock is with Samsung DeX, and that's one of the main reasons I'm gonna show this off first. We'll just plug one end into the phone and the other end into the USB Type-C display port on the Next Dock. My phone is already set up to launch DeX on an external screen, but you could just mirror it if you want to. And here it is, this is DeX. It's a desktop interface for your Samsung Android device, and the Next Dock works amazingly with it. We have touch functionality up top here, trackpad, keyboard, speakers, everything's working here and it's a great experience. And by the way, a lot of the Galaxy S line does support DeX. So if you have anything from the Samsung Galaxy S8 on up, you can use it in this way. I would personally recommend using something with at least the Snapdragon 855, but if you do have an older chipset like the 835 or the 845, it still works just fine. So another thing that they've added is iPad Pro support, and it's not the best support, and it really comes down to Apple not allowing it. But here I have the iPad Pro, this is the 11 inch model. I have it plugged in right into that USB Type-C display port, and as you can see, we can mirror the screen. It doesn't take up the full screen on the next dock, but it doesn't allow touch support, and that really comes down to Apple. We do have trackpad and keyboard support, but we can't use the built-in touchscreen on the next dock with an iPad Pro. So I'll go ahead and tell you right now, if you're just strictly an iPad user, I would stay away from this because the support really isn't there. Now before we move over to the Raspberry Pi, which is basically my favorite way to use the next dock, I want to show you another way that I personally really like using this, and that's with a Samsung Galaxy tablet. Now this will work from the Galaxy S4 on up to the S7 Plus. I have the S7 Plus here plugged in. And as you can see, it's mirroring the screen because I don't have it set up to go directly into dex mode, which you can do from the settings. 
but I just wanted to show you that the touch screen trackpad and the keyboard does work in Android. So what I want to do is watch a movie, but I also need to get some work done. And in my case, um, I'm not going to be doing work. I'm actually going to be playing a game. But if you needed to work, we do have two screens to work with here. I'm going to be watching a movie on the tablet screen itself, but I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to enable dex mode. And what this is going to do is set up the next dock to go into dex mode. And now I can use these independently of each other. So we have Android over here. If I want to go into some different Android apps, I can on the tablet. Or if I just want to use dex mode over on the next dock with the keyboard, trackpad, and that touch screen, I can. And by the way, in either of these modes, you can set it up so the sound comes out of the tablet or the next dock. It's pretty easy to do from the dex settings. So over here in dex, I'm going to launch a game. We'll go with Asphalt 9. And I definitely want it in full screen mode over here on dex. So I'll just enable that real quick. Grab my controller, which is connected to the tablet over Bluetooth. And I can start playing my game and watching a movie at the same time. Or when it really comes down to it, you can get work done on the next dock while you're watching a movie or even playing a game over here on the tablet side. And with something like the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus, which is powered by the Snapdragon 865 Plus, running two high-end apps on each of these screens really won't affect performance. And that's one thing I really like about the next dock, because when the next tablet comes out or the next phone with a higher-end CPU, it'll work. I'll just plug it right in, and I've basically just upgraded my performance. Moving over to my number one use case scenario for the next dock, single board computers, mainly the Raspberry Pi, but this will work with other single board computers. And with the way I have this set up with the Raspberry Pi 4 right now, all I need is HDMI and USB Type-C. That USB Type-C is going to send power to the Pi from the built-in battery on the next dock. And we're also going to get data so we can use the trackpad, keyboard, USB port, and micro SD card on the next dock. But in order to use this with only two cables on the Raspberry Pi 4, you will have to add this to your config.txt. And by the way, I'm running Raspberry Pi OS right now, but I have tested this with Twister and a few other operating systems. And as for battery life with the Raspberry Pi 4, I tested this at the stock clocks, 1.5 gigahertz on the Raspberry Pi 4 with the screen at full brightness. I got seven hours and eight minutes out of it. Now, if you're overclocking your Raspberry Pi 4, you will get a bit less, but I'd say at two gigahertz, this would be good for five hours of use out of it. And I think that's pretty awesome. I've also went through and tested a few other single board computers, but unfortunately the Odroid boards don't have USB Type-C for power, so you need a separate power supply for those. And that's one of the main reasons this is kind of my go-to for the Raspberry Pi 4. And real quick, I just wanted to give you a little demo here. Sound is working over HDMI from the Raspberry Pi 4. And before I wrap this video up, I did want to test one more thing. We have the new Google Chromecast with Google TV. Now, I don't think touch is going to be working, but we might be able to get the keyboard and trackpad working. So we have it plugged into HDMI. I just plugged in power to the USB Type-C. Looks like we're definitely getting picture here. Let's test out that touch and trackpad. And just as I thought, I mean, Google TV doesn't have touch built in, and unfortunately... We're not getting trackpad or keyboard working. This was just kind of a quick test I wanted to run. I've been using this thing a lot lately. It was sitting right on my desk, so I figured I'd go ahead and test it. So in the end, I personally really like the new Next Dock Touch. I would choose this over the Next Dock too. I mean, obviously, we don't have big bezels on this thing anymore, and we have that built-in touch screen. Now, this is definitely not for everybody. It's not a real laptop. You need a separate device to use it as a functional laptop or entertainment setup. There's no RAM, there's no built-in CPU, and it doesn't come with an operating system. You need a separate device to use this with. So basically, it's a battery, screen, touchpad, and keyboard that allows you to use other devices through it. So if you don't have other devices that you can use with this, then I wouldn't even think about getting it. But it does work with certain Android devices that support HDMI out, single board computers, game consoles, and you could even use this as a secondary display for your main PC or your laptop. So this is really kind of focused at a niche market. It's not for everybody, but for those who are on the go a lot and do want a trackpad, keyboard, and a bigger screen for their device, I think this is an awesome option. And I found that when I'm out and about, when I'm on vacation, all I really needed was my Next Dock 2 and my Samsung Galaxy S10. I have basically everything I need on my S10 for light computing, and it transfers really well over to DeX on the Next Dock. 
So yeah, I'm a big fan of this device. They are up for pre-order right now. They are a bit pricey at $249, and yes, you can buy a fully functional Windows laptop for that, but if you're not looking for a new Windows laptop, you're looking for something a bit different, then this might be an awesome option for you. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I'm going to leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the next Doc Touch, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.